Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to the Fire Emblem 7 Heath Percent Draft Race Practice Demonstration. I'm here with Raisins. How are you doing? Doing yeah, super well. Super well. And this is when we get into chapter 25 of Hector Normal Mode, Crazed Beast. This is probably the most exciting chapter of the whole run for me, which is why I saved him for the second part, because this chapter can absolutely destroy your run or make it golden. Because this is, first of all, this is where we grind a bunch of levels on Heath to make him competent for the rest of the playthrough, uh, make him able to do what we need him to do for the last like six, seven maps. Uh, but it's also where you can lose a lot of time if things go wrong. So if I don't execute things properly here, we're going to be in a lot of trouble. And we're two minutes under PB right now, so I really don't want to lose all that time I build up through all the luck and all the execution that I've done so far. So at this point, I'm super tense, but I'm into it because I got a plan for Crazy Beast. And it's actually your plan, Raisins, which means you might be familiar with what's coming up. That's right. I'm, I'm, I'm blushing a bit. Yeah, Crazy Beast is a map where there are tons of reinforcements and it is an objective based map that your drafted units are the ones who actually satisfy the objective and there are tons of reinforcements so it's easy to lose time and the way you don't lose time is with your draft which is definitely the best part like if every single chapter were like this it it, it would be super ideal but we get one and that's amazing so craze beast is really fun uh we get to see all the drafted units come in and it, you, you, you'll see you'll see yeah everything contributes really well okay so I'm going to roll it. Three, two, one, bonk. Let's go. So, um, yeah, every single party tackles this one a little bit differently. For Flyers, you have the advantage that they can take two of the three forts that you have to seize with any character. It doesn't have to be Hector. Uh, all of them can take it. And Flyers can take two of them generally. But they have to be careful about which they go to because depending on where you go, you might lose a bunch of time fighting enemies or you might risk their death. And there's a tons of different ways to approach it. We're mostly going to go into Heath for this one. Uh, Heath, as you can see, is taking out a couple of Axe Reavers as well as some other tools to take care of the bottom left fort. And he's going to fly up there. Uh, he's going to get a bunch of pirate kills for easy XP because he still has a bunch of grinding to do. He needs to be level, I would say around level 17, 18, 19 is ideal for promoting him next chapter. Not a whole lot of wriggle room there. And uh, after he's got a bunch of kills on the pirates, we're going to get him to the uh, upper right fort where the bishop is. And we're going to chill there. And then Isadora is going to be in charge of dropping Hector on the fort near Pascal, which is the best way to avoid dealing with a bunch of cavalry reinforcements. Now, in the old days of draft racing, we would just like punch through all the reinforcements at that castle and just kind of deal with it. But ever since so we've gotten rough. we got better and better <laughs> at this game. And now we've developed a couple strategies where you don't have to. And one of them that you can do is use an eight move unit to drop Hector on the fort. Uh, you start this turn barely out of reinforcement range. This is like barely out of the reinforcement zone range that would trigger these reinforcements. And then you can use your full eight move to move in there, drop Hector on the fort and prevent them from coming out of that fort. And when you're past the line where the forts are and where the reinforcements would spawn, uh, you can move Hector onto the fort and uh, you're golden. You pretty much got one fort covered. Uh, this is honestly worth training an eight move unit for if you have one. Uh, but oh, just alone, for yeah. sure. <laughs> but then Isadora is like, just comes for free and just gives it to you. The it, it's so funny because you know people people complain about ambush spawns and I understand rightly so it's a pretty frustrating mechanic but well the, these cavaliers that show up at the fort God do I wish they were ambush spawns right <laughs> like they appear at the end of the enemy phase which means there's there's no way past them if you attack them on player phase okay you've opened up a hole but then it's just going to refill itself and they're not going to move off or anything like that so you need two units to get through here or you need to do this kind of eight move strat right here so let's talk about Heath for a moment. He's, he's the one who's on the camera, but he's just axe ravering on down here. Now let's see what Isadora does. Okay, Isadora just goes up. Again, she looked out perfectly outside the range and then drops Hector on. Rip. Because she's in the reinforcement zone, she's going to trigger all the cavalry reinforcements, and yes, rip, she dies. Oh no. Yeah, that sucks. Uh, it might be surprising to see that we're killing one of one of our units in a draft race, but it's honestly a pretty good strategy if it allows for this much of a time save. I don't think we've run estimates, but I think it, this drop alone can save like eight minutes, which is more than Isidora can probably save by staying alive and using a different strategy here. Uh, there are different strategies uh, for this, but we don't need Isidora anymore. So we're just going to sacrifice her like this. Uh, but we are working on strategies where she might be useful after this. In that case, it would be useful to have another eight move unit to sacrifice here instead. Like in the past, I would train up Kent uh, for this portion, for example. And then Hector needs to be equipped for this turn to kill the cavalry reports that would get in his way to the fort. Uh, but after this, he's going to get on the fort, seize it, and then drop his weapons. Uh, or in this case, he broke his iron axe, but he still has a hand axe. Drop everything he has to stop him from counterattacking, and that will also save a bunch of combat. I wonder how much healing you loaded him up with, because it is pretty scary actually sitting on the fort for the remaining turns. Sometimes Hector is actually in a lot of trouble. Uh, also, of note, 
we can't buy any more vulnerabilities or elixirs for the rest of the run until 31x. So the healing items we have are the healing items we got. So it's actually like kind of scary what we're dealing with right now, which means you know it should be pretty meaningful when you see Heath running around with an elixir. You really can't mess around with Heath on this map. Like his, he has got to go, go, go. Oh, for sure. If Heath doesn't make it to certain points by certain times, then we're going to incur a massive time loss. But the path he takes is very specific. I used the pure water last turn, even though it wasn't near any uh, magic users, because uh, the tiles that you seize, you don't have to wait on them or seize or anything or perform like any actions on them. You just have to be there at some point. And then uh, if you like, you need to do a action there, but it can be using a pure water, for example. Then you can just canto off of it and get a couple extra tiles there. It would actually be crucial. Uh, also worth noting is that Heath crit the warrior boss last turn uh, during the enemy phase. Otherwise, that guy would get two shot. I think when he first hit him, he didn't have enough damage output to kill him in two hits. But over the course of the next couple of turns, he grew so much strength that he was able to two shot him after all. Which is just a... Yeah, just get lucky, right? <laughs> yeah, it's a good microcosm of, uh, you know, how fast Heath trains. Uh, in this chapter. This is where he gets the majority of his levels, mostly up higher. Like, he's already level 17 right now. I think he came in at like 12 or 13 or something. It's pretty insane how fast oh, he yeah. grows. For sure. And and I will say, you know, uh, someone in the comments could say, oh, Mecca, you just got lucky because you crit the warrior. To be honest with you, in a draft race, like, you're gonna get lucky and you're gonna get unlucky all over the place, right? Like, it's very unlikely that you'll just get consistent RNG throughout. And to win, you kind of need to get pretty lucky. I'm not gonna lie. You're up against four other skilled players, so... Mm -hmm. Oh, here's Farina. Tell us about Farina. <laughs> uh, she flies up to Hector, tries to talk to him, but she's not going to manage to because he's surrounded by like 5,000 enemies that can't get through to him because he tossed away his weapons. I will say about Heath and the Warrior, um, usually he will kill the Warrior before he's out of that area and get the XP regardless. And this turn I used Elixir at like, for like 12 HP. So if, even if the Warrior hit me again, which he doesn't even have that great out to doing, uh, I would still be fine here. So creating the Warrior just saves me like a little bit of combat, but maybe like a couple seconds. Not really that big of a significance. Uh, so. Heath's routing to get to the Bishop Fort is also sort of specific. I'm moving through an area with a couple of extra pirates in it. It's a bit of extra combat, I think, um, but it's helpful because that means I'm more secure about promoting him. I know he mentions a couple benchmarks if I promote him early in Tony mode. I don't want to promote him before level 18, definitely. And here's where I sometimes got stuck behind these pirates because what they would do is move in front of me and attack me and not die. And Heath doesn't double him with the Ooh, actual yeah, as you can see. Him. And then he can't get to the bishop in time to kill him. But fortunately, Farin is right next to him and provides a really good target practice for them. Uh, but I weakened one of the pirates. So even if one of them killed Farina, for example, or something, and then another one attacked Heath, uh, that guy would probably die. Uh, but that's the part where I got stuck before because I would approach it from below. And by approaching it from the side, I make it easier for them to uh, be out of my way. Because I think there'd be more pirates there or something. I don't, I don't remember exactly how it works. I just noticed this pattern works. I think you made it over there very quickly, which is super good. So, but it looks like Farna is gonna about to mess up your AI here. So you probably got to get in there real quick, right? There you go, and you're gonna kill the bishop. Yep, just like that. Very, very precise. These movements. It looks like, especially with the pure water over there, you really solved the issue of getting over there so slowly that you get blocked off by the north. Because I do remember in some of my older practices when I wasn't getting over there in as few turns. I would totally get blocked off by the north from those pirates every single time. It was actually really frustrating. But especially with that pure water play over there, like, very well done. You just got over there. You, you didn't linger. You didn't decide to, you know, stay a while, train extra XP. Uh, really I, well done. Also, got, got a bit lucky, but, you know, come on. <laughs> Look, I didn't save any turns by getting lucky, all right? I will say the pure water, I think I think you used a Vuln. That's where I got the idea from. I think Donna also mm -hmm. did it once where, like, I think it's 0% growth. You, like, grabbed that village and then got into the tower or something. Stuff like that is... What you can do to get uh, turns here. Uh, also, Heath crit the bishop boss as well. So he's like two for two and killing boss in this map with crits. Uh, but that guy he doubled because he had purge. So that was a very easy uh, double attack and kill. And like I had a player face and an enemy face to dispose of him as well. So that's uh, just really, really safe to do. And there's a season. Oh now we're goodness. three minutes under PB. Three minutes. Yeah, my last run of this wasn't very good. I think I actually lost a turn here on the previous PB. And that's why mm -hmm. I, it looks like that. Um, so yeah, great crazed beasts, and now this is definitely a run. And it's time to promote Heath at level 19. Uh, I think the previous run I did, I like I said, I missed a couple benchmarks for promoting early, so I was very happy to see Heath uh, both get a very fast crazed beast, but also reach level 19. So he got all the kills he needed off the previous couple chapters. Uh, if he's not promoted by next chapter, you're in serious trouble. This chapter, I can get away with him being like, I don't know, 18.50 or something, I think, and get a couple kills. I was very happy to see this. Uh, in this chapter, it's about as different from Crazy Beast as it can be in almost every aspect. Uh, I'm oh, going to yeah. mess up a little bit here. I always forget that Hector 
Uh, doesn't have any weapons left here. He actually needs like a hand axe and a brave axe to do what he need, what I need him to do here. And I almost forgot to arm him, uh, which threw me off a little bit. I think I already saved my preps too. And I'm like, okay, I just armed Hector. That's it. Uh, let's just go. Uh, but then I make a wrong selection. And I accidentally do the promurnus. Uh, you can't see it because Oof. there's no audio. Uh, but I pressed A instead of B. So I actually have to redo that prep real quick. Uh, I think this is also one of the bigger mess-ups of the run, which really says a lot about this run. That this is a big mess-up. It cost me like maybe like 20 seconds or something. Uh, still looks pretty silly, uh, but these things happen. The perfect race will never exist. That's right. That's right. It's so funny because you talk about forgetting to arm Hector. I actually routed more recently into some of my notes. So you know how you have Ellawood go shopping in 22, or, or in 21 rather, in yeah. the Oleg map? Yeah, I just don't have him put the con put the weapons in convoy and have him buy hand axes and pure water. So <laughs> you can just map and you forgot. Ellawood just has the weapons on him. So. Oh, that's smart. I like that. I think I had Elwood buy pure water. He, he just throws him in a convoy, I guess. Yeah, that works. That works. That's clever. Um, yeah, so let's talk about this map for a little bit. Uh, there's, I think, a total of like five, six enemies that you might want to fight, depending on who your carry is and everything else you just want to avoid. Because it's a defense map, it's going to end up for 11 turns anyway. And you can avoid most of the combat by exploring the Wyvern AI. Uh, you probably noticed if you played this map before that the enemies have a tendency to fly towards certain points in the map. There are four Wyvern Conventions, or Wyvern Conventions as I like to call them, mm -hmm. uh, at the central points of each border of the map. Uh, so like all the way in the west, all the way in the south, all the way in the north, etc. And as long as you're not in range with the Wyverns, they will just be programmed to fly there. So just don't disturb them, and they'll go to their conventions um, undisturbed. And it's, it leaves only a couple enemies to fight. Uh, he kills a pair of brigands on turn one on the mountains uh, using either an iron sword or an axe reaver, depending on how many axe reaver uses I have. And that stops him from moving around like every turn. It's faster to kill those, I think, than having to move around every turn. Uh, Hector kills sure. the Luna Shaman that we need for Athos later on. Very important, especially if you don't get the, the one in the desert, which I never get. Don't and throw I, the Luna. Ooh. Yeah, don't throw the Luna. I threw the Heaven Seal instead, thank God. Honestly, you should arm Hector with like one less item, so I don't have to discard anything there. And I kill these nomads because they're also moving every turn. So I have to fight him eventually. Might as well do it ASAP. And then um, the key from there is just making sure you have as little moves as possible to do uh, and getting final positions. And I just have a screenshot of the final positions of all my units. And other than Heath, they're all there. <laughs> I guess I need to switch Hector to the Brave Axe to fight a couple Wyverns uh, in case his speed isn't good enough or his strength isn't good enough. Uh, switch Heath to the Steel Lance to one round the Wyverns because I know sometimes the Iron Lance is not good enough and the Javelin has other issues like more worse might, worse accuracy. Uh, but fortunately, I had a Steel Lance from, I think, Sane Steel Lance uh, that could just one round them. And yeah, it definitely would have been Sane Steel Lance. Yeah. And then next turn, he just moves up like a couple tiles to make sure that he, I think he uh, has to be out of range of a Wyvern that goes to the bottom convention. And then that's basically the whole map in a nutshell. <laughs> you see that new you turn. The Brave Axe already coming in very useful. I can see it right now. No, like, like I said, the hard part for me was getting the Brave Axe. And after seeing how you got it, it's like, yes, of course. Like, of course, that's how you do it. Yeah, so. I think if you're uh, playing uh, a race with uh, not fixed stats, but just like random stats, then you should just gauge your Hector carefully to see if he has enough attack to do this without the Brave Axe. Uh, if you have mm -hmm. Hawkeye, you might want to use the Brave Axe elsewhere and it can run out of uses if you don't use it carefully. Uh, but in this case, he can't use Axes, so I might as well just spend, use the Brave Axe whenever I want to and just don't have to think about it. So this is like kind of preparation for me running without fixed stats to see uh, even if my Hector has like bad speed or bad strength, he can still one-round those Wyverns. Because I know on average, I think he can do it with the Wolf Beal or the Iron X, depending on the stats, but it's not guaranteed. Yeah, no, for sure. I, I tend to have my Hector running around with some pretty good weapons around here too, especially if I'm doing Heath, because like he's the only person left in my party who can use axes. So, you know, like he, he like he gets Hawkeye's Killer Axe. He'll end up getting a Tomahawk later. He'll he'll end up getting a second Wolf Bale if I get that later. But I, I, I think we no longer get the second Wolf Bale. No. I, I, I don't know. Yeah, I like the Killer Axe too, because even if you don't double with it, there's a good chance you'll crit one of the two Wyverns that he fights, and then you just finish off the one you didn't crit on player phase. That also works. I, I don't think I ever use the Killer Axe right now, because I just I have the Brave Axe. It's better in almost every situation for its reliability. For sure, for sure. I noticed you said, by the way, you elixir for 12 last turn. Is that going to be your Elixir Golf score today? Uh, I think it might just be. Uh, I think <laughs> in my last PB, I had Athos Elixir for like two in the final chapter. I don't know if that counts, though, because... Uh... Uh, that wasn't this one. Sure. I'll, let it, I'll let it count. I'll let it count. Yeah, we. It, whenever we play draft race, Mecca and I and some other people play a game called Elixir Golf, where we see who can elixir for the fewest hit points during the race. So twelve is a pretty good score. We'll see if we can get any lower. Mm -hmm. It's really there because nice. you, you get another elixir in this map from Louise, and that's enough for most of the game. 
Uh, Elixir Running has actually become a lot tighter over the time because I no longer visit uh, the Guiding Chapter where you can buy Elixirs, uh, Battle Preparations, and that means that I'm stuck with the Elixirs that I get from recruitable characters mostly. Uh, it's like Ninians, Louises, and then Nino can come with one. So uh, you gotta be a little bit aware of your Elixirs, but I was surprised at like how easy it was to just skip that chapter and just use the Elixirs that we get, especially with recruiting Nino in the next chapter. Uh, but first, we have Pill Flower of Darkness. Let's see here. Okay, I'm looking forward to it because this is the one where we get the bolting, right? Yeah. So the mage uh, next, next to the archer in the, on the camera right now has the bolting tome. And he has, I don't know how to describe his AI, but I've just noticed that whenever I do these moves, he will go in range of Hector on turn two, I want to say, for me to kill with the hand axe. Even if Hector stands right there with the hand axe in front of him, he'll just move one left from here and bolting Merlinless again. I don't know why he does it. And if I move differently, deploy extra characters, it's kind of hard to get him to use the bolting again. So in the, go to that position again. And the bolting is very important for the final chapter once again for Aethos. So I really need to get it. And uh, this is where having a unit with a longbow, for example, can come in handy. Uh, Florina, uh, when Donna uses her, uh, uses Lin here to get to use a longbow and kill him. And you can also use Wrath if he's still alive, like you didn't sacrifice him in Grace Beast uh, for that purpose, which I think I might work on doing if I uh, ever revisit this uh, to try and see if I can get it. Because it would be nice if, Hector, if Heath could move more forward uh, in the first couple turns instead of staying there and having to babysit Hector. Because uh, it's a seize map, Hector's got to move. Uh, so here, I don't think Hector needs to re-equip, honestly, but I do it in, just in case a Wyvern attacks him. But these are Heath's XP, like they need to go for Heath because he's still not done growing. Looks like they are going for Heath too with Hector on the forest. The the A on his map, yes, is very funny. I think we all have our different ways of getting this drunken mage to go into the right square before we hit him with the Anax or something, but it, it it's very tricky. Generally speaking, you find a setup, and as long as the setup works once, it usually works every time. I've never I've, I've never found one where mine fails to work, but yeah, it, maybe it would just come up later. Yeah. Something else we should probably note is that there are two versions of the chapter, the, the Kenneth one and the Jeremy one. The Kenneth one is the one we're playing right now. Uh, it used to be an issue where unaware players would be caught getting the Jeremy version instead and having to play a route map instead of a seize map and a very long route map at that, basically just losing entire attempts uh, to it. Uh, this was, it would only happen because Bartra or Dorcas would get XP. We never recruit Gi or Raven to begin with. And if you did, you had to kill him off anyway. Uh, for this reason, because their XP would outmatch the Guiding Ring users. Like, because we use so few units, it's very likely that you'll just get up this map anyway. Uh, because you just you just don't use any Guiding Ring users or Hero Crest users. Uh, but it was just like a funny little detail. We actually made an, an amendment to the rules at one point to allow people to kill off whatever character they wanted in Chapter 26. Just to oh, make, yeah. let them make sure that they can get whatever chapter they want between these two. Yeah, there, there, there was some bickering about whether or not you should only be able to kill off Hero Crest units. And I'm like, well, what if somebody wants to go Jimmy? They should be able to kill off the Guiding Ring units too, mm -hmm. right? Like, you know, even, even if it's a bad move. I'm all for equality in this, in this regard. Exactly. Uh, this little uh, room before the throne room, kind of tricky. Uh, two longbow archers that can block your way and not suicide. And then a sniper that does significant damage to Heath and Florina if he hits you. I think it's a steel or silver bow, I forgot. And then a sword mass that's tough to double. Uh, Florina can have enough to speed to double on one of the KOMs. That's where she gains some time over... Uh, Heath, and then the sniper. Uh, this is the term. This is the only term where Heath has a javelin equipped this entire chapter just to counter that sniper and get some more XP off of him. And then the throne room itself is also a big threat. Uh, the only enemy there is Kenneth, but Kenneth is like it's very scary. Florin doesn't care it's about him nasty. because her res is so good. Uh, she has really high luck too. I don't think she can even get crit. Uh, but Heath, on the other hand, can just die to a Kenneth crit. Even if you use an elixir and then a pure water to stay at full health at plus seven res, he will kill you with an aura crit unless you get really lucky. Um, so I just pick a god and pray. I don't attack because he two shots me with the health I have left. And uh, that just adds more chances to failure. Because if I just miss once, I have a chance of death here. Uh, but fortunately, it just hits me normally and I don't die. It's kind of similar to Zoldan where the way you deal with an enemy who has high crit or an enemy who's very likely to kill you is to just slim down as m many things as you do beforehand, right? Like just don't do a bunch of stuff. Same with, same with Zoldan. The, the best way to avoid a Zoldum crit is to just not do stuff before the Zoldum crit. That way, if you get crit, your retries are pretty short, right? Yeah, so true. you don't waste a whole lot of time. I mean, let's be real, though. Would I do anything differently if I if this guy didn't have crit on me? I don't think so. Yeah, no. It's still, it's still a good attempt. And again, like, good speedrun strats are the ones that do as little as can. not As mm. little as you can, not as much as you can. It's yeah. kind of funny, too. I was going to mention at the start, we didn't move our units a whole lot. But that's because... You know, there's, there's nothing to do. Generally speaking, player phases where you do nothing are still pretty fast, even though it looks like you're not advancing the game. 
we're still getting closer to our goal of hitting the bolting. For sure. Especially for the maps or just maps where you're waiting for something to happen. Uh, speaking of waiting, we shouldn't wait too long on this map because this is Battle Before Dawn. This is the other run killer. This is where runs go to die. And oftentimes when there's nothing to, you can do about it, but over the time we have gained experience to the point where we have measures to make sure that as little can go wrong as possible, uh, but things can still go wrong. So the chapter is famous for three NPCs that tend to die out of your control, Zephiel, Nino, and Jafar. Of these, Zephiel is the only one who gives a game over. So the chapter is kind of based around making sure that he's as safe as possible. Uh, so we have a route for Heath that just gets him towards where Zephiel is and with the least amount of enemies getting to Zephiel as possible. Uh, this also involves making it to Ursula as soon as possible, who, uh, blah. if you kill her uh, in the bottom right corner, uh, there will be no more reinforcements, which is great for fact-finding in general because that means you don't face any um, extra reinforcements that you don't have to, no extra combats. So turn one, um, Heath moves almost full move. Uh, we dance with Ninian, use sacrifice here sometimes, but uh, this strategy using a seven move unit can be any one of them, uh, ensures that she is safe. And then Heath can go on and use the door key that he traded from Ninian after using pure water to advance, I think like 14 tiles on turn one, which is pretty impressive. Well, not 14, we're at like 12. Yeah, it's really good. So we end up not being able to counterattack this bishop, but that's fine because no matter where he attacks us from, we'll still be able to escape to the south, which is more important than killing him. So, and again, we're really trying to just bunga our way down to Ursula. The setup is pretty precise because you need, you need to do two things in order to kill Ursula on turn four, which is when I think you intend to kill Ursula, which is on turn yeah. four. You need to do two things. First, you need to move down there. And then secondly, you need to actually have vision of her on turn four player phase because you cannot legally initiate an, att an attack unless you can see that target. So that's why we bring the torch. That's why we end up doing the movements that we do. You actually need to get way closer to Ursula than you would think. Uh, also, I know it is a Fog of War map, but us at this point, we just kind of know where the enemies are, where the enemies are likely to be. So uh, Mech is a very skilled player. He's not going to bump into a unit and get, you know, dinged I would by the not. ambush thing. There. Yeah, no. That sounds like a bad way to lose a run if that were to happen to you. But yeah, Bishop moves out of my way. Uh, he's inventory kind of tight because he can't just bring like four javelins to this map because he needs to torch the door key, um, elixir to heal himself. So he only has a silver lance and a spear with him. And I used to use the spear on turn one, but it would just like kind of run out on all these enemies that I don't really care about. I could just kill somebody's turn two or don't bother with them at all. So now I equip the spear to deal with the archer that he's about to face. Uh, I'm not sure about fighting this hero. I feel like there should be a setup where you don't have to fight him with Hector because it feels pretty shaky, especially if you don't have the sword reaver like I do. Uh, I did two shot him. Do you remember if that's like normal for him to do? Normal for Hector to two shot? I think so. I mean, you can always just look at Tony mode and benchmark it. Yeah. But I tend to recall Hector with the Sword Reaver doing usually just fine here. If not, uh, your Cavalier Reinforcements or your Flunky with an Iron Sword can usually contribute the oh, extra needed so damage. So you usually fight him as well then? Yes, I, I've, I always fight the hero. Okay. Especially good. if I'm going for Nino. Because I thought I was doing something wrong. Uh, also, Jafar can die. And if Jafar dies turn two, um, what buttons do you press? Controller. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> if Jafar dies, you, you, just, you just give up. It's, you just don't. Yeah, you're don't. <laughs> There are a few situations like that where it kind of sucks that something exists that you have to reset for, but the way you play around it is you just take note of the specific conditions you need to see for resetting. Always have them in your mind, and the moment you see them, don't hesitate. Just immediately reset. That's the best way to save time around it. Don't sit there and think like, eh, ah, you know, maybe that sword of fighter is you know further away from Zephyr than I think he is. No, just don't, just don't think. Immediately yeah. controller. This is what your preparation is for. There are a few other places in the run that are like that. Yeah. Ooh, uh, this bit weird. is improvised. I actually, uh, I used to not move Hector down here at all to do the chest key thing. Uh, like, which is, uh, there's a Delphi shield in the chest room uh, in the right that I want for Heath. And I would normally mm -hmm. have an enemy thief take it and then kill the thief with Heath. Uh, but I'm trying to see if it's faster to have uh, Hector grab it instead. And he can also grab Nino on the way. Uh, and Donald says it's faster, uh, Raisin thinks it might be faster, so I was like, you know what, let's try it out. Uh, but that means that Hector's path towards there is almost completely improvised, so he still has to fight off a couple of enemies on his way there. I have to make sure Nini is safe, and this is actually how I lost a bunch of time on my previous run that I'm running the splits against right now. So we're going to see if that pays off or not uh, when we get to the end of the chapter. Uh, but in that one, I can tell you, like, people got attacked that should not have been attacked. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. yeah, that, hopefully it goes well this time. For sure, and it looks like two. 
like you said, you're not just getting the Delphi Shield, you're getting Nino, which is very important because that means you can get an extra elixir that you otherwise wouldn't have gotten. Yes. And, you know, it doesn't seem like a whole lot. Oh, you're able to skip chapter 31x. That chapter takes like 45 seconds. Well, as you're getting better and better and you're looking for a time to cut, 31x is one of those. So if we can cut 31x out, that'll be pretty good. Yeah. I, I clinged to going to 31x for quite a while, actually, because it was just pretty safe feeling. But at some point, you just got to try it. If it doesn't work, you can always go back to going there. But uh, if it does work out, you just found a time save. And hey, that's worth uh, that mercenary that he just kills from left. That's the most important one. It's honestly the reason why we're going here down here in the first place. He starts near Ursula, but he starts moving, I think, turn three or four. And I think he had one turn to move away from us. By moving Heath where I did left of Ursula, uh, he was forced to come back and fight him because Leith was a legal target. And that way he doesn't make it to Zephiel ever. And that means that I think only one enemy will ever make the Zephiel if that, uh, th whether he even does, it depends on what Jafar does, I think. Uh, but either way, it means Zephiel is basically confirmed safe now unless Jafar really fucks up. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is an interesting path. I guess you found something though. Well, that, for Hector? Yeah, for Hector. I have Going, no idea what I'm doing with Hector. <laughs> no idea. Oh, okay. what, I'm, uh, I think at this point, I'm afraid of a mage that's um, like on the left side a little bit. I'm not sure if I killed him yet or not. And I just want to stay out of his range. And I know Hector has like forever to get to the chest room anyway. That's fair. That's fair. But look at this. Yeah, so the Brave Lance is built for, by the way, we, we never use the Brave Lance anymore. Once upon a time, we did. We were like, oh, let's use the Brave Lance here, Brave Lance here. And I think like we shredded out all the bosses again. I was like, wait, the best weapon is just Silver Lance. Like, just buy a bunch of silvers. You'll be fine. Yeah, I think you Ooh. did a bunch of math on it. And yeah, this is where uh, this actually also something I heard you say once. I don't know if it's actually to play, uh, but having Heath rescue Jafar eliminates the chance that he kills like one of the thieves or that he doesn't get countered because Jafar only has a killing edge, whereas Heath has a spear equipped. So we can counter all these enemies that just start attacking and get rid of them. Mm -hmm. And it also eliminates Jafar just moving around on NPC phase. Uh, but it is awkward now because that sniper, as you can see, uh, or as you can count, uh, is in range with Zephiel. So now I have to make decisions like, where is Heath going to go? Yeah, I've definitely never done the rescue Jafar play. I, ha I have other ways to ensure that Jafar doesn't kill the thie or doesn't kill the um, the thieves. So I, I think there's a there's a placement you can do that makes the thieves run west for one turn, and then once oh, yeah. they run west, they're stuck on it until they get the door. And then on the return trip, you'll always get them. I remember that. So. I was greedy though. Uh, but yeah, the sniper ended up attending Zephyr. I know we didn't want to kill, thankfully. Uh, but now I'm like, oh, I lost vision because I rescued Jafar. So. I have to put myself in a spot where I can see the sniper next turn. So I just put myself close to him, close to Zephiel, because I know he's going for Zephiel again. Uh, grab Nino real quick. Uh, she, I think she used an elixir earlier, so I have two use of elixir out of her. That's enough for me, honestly. Yeah, good uh, enough. But, yeah, but unfortunately, because I'm holding Jafar, it means my accuracy is reduced. So there's a chance I missed the sniper. And I think that's actually what happened in the previous run as well. Oof. Yeah, I'll, I'll have to look at it and see. I To be, to be honest, I'm... Not entirely sold on the whole rescuing Jafar idea, but maybe there's something, maybe there's something you're getting that I'm not seeing right now. Nah, I so. think honestly it might be fast to have the thief run left, especially now that I have Hector to take care of the chest room instead of that thief. I don't really have to wait for that thief to come back. So, uh, and the way you do it, I think would allow the uh, thief to or would allow Heath to remain at full speed. Which would be great. Uh, this is another reason why Hector is carrying out the sword weaver from the last two chapters, so we can kill the thieves if the need arises. Because uh, I can have them take the treasure crisis. anyway. Like the, the whole plan of having Heath uh, kill the thieves before they get here kind of fell in the water the moment that Zephiel started being dumb. Uh, oh, but that's now we right. got the boots. Yeah, to deal with that. Very important item. Kill the other thief. He's like, you know what? I brought this chest game. I'm going to use it. <laughs> that's right. Come on. Uh, but yeah, the chapter. You, I guess you do get the Brave Lance now. So. Yeah, it's like, it's weird because if that thief goes about taking treasure in a different order or something, or like, I don't remember exactly what it is. It's like, depending on which thief takes which chest, uh, you might not get the Brave Lance. So relying on strategy where you need to Brave Lance is a bad idea. That's basically the gist of it. Uh, but if you exactly. look at that split timer right now, you can see that this chapter went a lot better than last time. Ooh, let's go. And the Tims. Exactly. We use the boots on Heath to, because he needs to anyway, so might as well do it from here instead of preps. So I don't forget. Exactly. If there's a risk of reset, then you, you could say, oh, you shouldn't be using the boots here, but none. There, there's no risk of reset. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, once you've got the map to this state, you're totally yeah. safe. There are no more reinforcements. There's what, Maxime and a mage. All right, super well done. Very exactly. impressive. Thank you, thank you. Five minutes, really nervous now. And we're in Kaga Destiny, but 
Uh, unlike in casual playthroughs, the map in draft racing is fortunately fairly simple and hard to lose a bunch of time on. I still somehow did in the PB, so this is not an opportunity to get an improvement here. Uh, Heath is going to run through almost the entire map in a predetermined fashion uh, to take out the enemies first that are the most troublesome and that have to be deleted first. Uh, the most important bit about Cargo Destiny is just don't trigger reinforcement zones. Uh, you might know the map is like a very enemy heavy uh, one, but if you only fight the enemies that you have to, there's actually not that many. And you can avoid like, I would say like 50% of the enemies you could potentially fight. Uh, but that doesn't mean I have to be very conscious of where I can and cannot go. Okay, Merlinus or no Merlinus? Merlinus, I see. Yes. Uh, yes. I want so to buy Silver Lances. There are four reinforcement zones in this map, and there are ways to avoid the first three. The last one, zone four as we call it, because uh, that's, that, that's what Wad calls it, I guess, is completely unavoidable. You have to go in there in order to kill Linus. Oh, also, by the way, even though there's a boss on a throne, this is a route map, in case you're very unfamiliar with it. So I think this is actually a good way to showcase some routing techniques that you end up using in draft races and just in particular why Heath is as good a carry as he is. It's not just the flying. It's the fact that in particular, when he starts a combat, he's likely to kill his target. He has very high strength, very high skill, also pretty high speed when he gets to this point. So he's probably going to double. He's probably going to crit. There are a lot of enemies who are just straight up one shots. So he's he ends up being really good in this map because the story of this map is there's like, what, 40 ish enemies on the map and it's just how quickly can you kill them? And the way that you kill 40 enemies quickly is making sure every time you get in a fight, you kill one of them. Like, you're going to have to do all these fights anyway. It's not like you can skip them. So just make sure that whenever you do it, you do a good job. Exactly. A good example of that is this Nomad Trooper that I'm hitting with my uh, Javelin right now, the Longbow guy. Uh, I think this is the only guy with a Longbow in the entire map. And he can he doesn't get countered when he attacks you, so you want to fight him on player face. So that's where he needs to be on turn two, kill this guy. And other than that, we just want to put Heath in places where he can fight as many enemies as possible in a reliable fashion. So try not to have him fight enemies that go on forests. Uh, try to have weapon triangle when possible. Uh, I brought a short spear so I can two-hit kill the general maybe. That's near the that's at the bottom of the screen right now. Uh, all those little things. I wanted to use a silver lance against Lion instead of having to use a javelin. Those kind of optimizations. That's really all you can do in a map like this. And besides that, there's like only little things like trying to minimize the turn count if possible, but not over anything else. And I guess uh, one more thing that I wanted to bring up. Um, oh, the brigand that's going to destroy the warp village. You want to kill him ASAP so he doesn't have time to talk, walk around. Avoid the village destruction animation. And that's really all there is to it. Other than that, you just got to kill the enemies. That's the most important part. Uh, this is actually a dumb positioning for him, though. I should improve this because the berserker right above him can go on a peak. And theoretically, that means mm. I should have bad accuracy on him. I think my Heath is so good uh, because Heath is so good that he doesn't end up missing. Uh, but there's probably a chance to, because Weapon Triangle plus Peak, there's probably a chance he misses here, and I don't think it's necessary. Yeah, I think I'm, when I do it, I'm one up one right, but I'm not, I'm not, I'm not entirely sure. But again, it's the kind of case where the point is, it, it seems counterintuitive to like not fight as many enemies as you can on each turn. You're thinking, oh, I got to go fast. Maybe this is what I should do. Um, but again, the most important part is to make sure that it's not so much how many enemies you kill, it's how well you kill them. And a strategy that fights 12 enemies and leaves one of them alive is probably going to be worse than a strategy that fights like eight or nine and kills every single one of them. So, Mecha, you do have a point that you want to get down to that brigand as quickly as possible. I uh, was something like, for example, like breaking a short spear here. I guess like you had to use the short spear against the general. So, yeah, it's just I, what it is. I think I exactly won two round with him or like two with Kyo and him. Mm -hmm. uh, this positioning is, I think, one outside of the reinforcement zone. Uh, I think zone two is what it's called. Uh, that spawns the uh, monks and the bishops in Hector Hard mode. That's how I remember it. I think I didn't kill the paladin, and I'm afraid he's going for healing AI, but I'm like, if I kill him now, I will not make it to the bottom left. It's time for the bring it. And I actually don't know for sure if he has healing AI. And if he doesn't, yo, great, I get to kill him. If not, I could just kill him next turn, and he won't have time to heal anyway. Exactly, this is super good too. Order strats used to just bunger the fire straight into zone 4, which is the zone around Linus with the snipers and whatnot. Since when you go into zone 4, not only does Veda spawn, uh, but also all the enemies on the map turn aggressive. You might think, oh, great, this is super good. But again, like I said, what you want is that every time an enemy moves, they also die. Because then you get through the map in as few enemy movements as possible. So this is why we ended up developing this path right here. It might seem very counterintuitive to uh, go all the way to the north and then go all the way to the southwest and then go all the way to the north again. Uh, but it really is actually the most efficient way to do it. 
because it ensures that the enemies don't move until they can fight you and they don't fight you until you can kill them. Exactly. I also did a bit of a trade with Ninian. I set her up with a couple of javelins beforehand because Heath is bound to use a bunch and he still needs to use a couple more. I, yeah, I love that. <laughs> I think I need a little bit less than I gave him. I also left a slot open for him so that he can buy a Silver Lance to use immediately without me having to sell one. Uh, it took me like a second to realize I could do that. And I'll buy a couple more for the next couple chapters. And this is another part of how we can skip battle preparations later. Uh, the, the, the actual chapter, not battle preps, period. Uh, because now I have enough Silver Lances and enough Elixirs to last me for the rest of the game. That's right, we have all the items we need. Hector can scrap around for some axes, but we're going to get some good axes in a moment. Yeah, and now it's just a matter of approaching zone 4. Uh, like you said, we're waiting until the very last moment to aggro all the enemies on the map and making sure there's as little enemies as possible when we do that so that when they move, we do actually get to kill them. Uh, this is a zone that we're forced to engage in eventually. It's also important that on the bottom right, um, everyone else is in position to deal with the consequences of activating zone 4. That means blocking the bottom two, bottom right two squares for the Wyvern reinforcements and having Hector ready to talk to Veda when she appears so that she doesn't spear my units and kill them and deprive me of my spear uh, if I have to kill her. Right. There's no way to block Veda specifically. She's actually a walk-on reinforcement, whereas all the all the other ones are spot reinforcements. You can block them, but uh, it's impossible to block Veda. Sure, I remember <laughs> it's always a trip going back to the older ones and everyone just completely evacuates the starting area and then fights like 20 Wyvern reinforcements. It's like, bro, what were you doing? I just <laughs> blocked them, bro. <laughs> I know, right? Okay, so here, nice. I don't know if there's a way to bait. I think there's probably a way to bait these fighter and warrior uh, dudes without going in zone four. I think I was just impatient and going for here and now they're going to move for one turn without me fighting them. Uh, probably a very minor implementation because honestly, an enemy moving, it doesn't even take a second, I think, if you're holding A and it goes fast. Um, there was something else yeah, I wanted to say here, but I forgot. So go ahead. <laughs> it'd, be, it'd be such a if I if I like called you on this, it'd be such a nitpick. Like, All right. Like, it didn't on, even move. Just... Oh, this warrior actually this really surprised me. You can only see it for like a flash of a second. It actually starts with a bow equipped for some reason. So I attacked him at range, hoping I would avoid a counterattack, and instead I saw a huge flashing number on the battle pro uh, like, forecast whoa. real quick. Uh, but he has enough HP to survive the hit. I'm like 99 percent sure. And I no, skill to get I, a crit I can too. in front of uh, lions if I want to. Uh, I don't, though, because I'm hella brave, apparently. I'm trying to, like, really PB hunt here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you, you can just check the forecast and see and make sure it's a favorable combat. It looks like it is, so... Yeah, it's it's pretty favorable, but if I were to attack next turn, I could miss and die. Um, it's a 90, 94 on hit, but I just go for it. I just take the 91 hit. Uh, if this was a proper race, I would definitely Elixir instead of just waiting. Uh, I just tried to skip the healing animation there. Um, <laughs> I didn't get punished, thankfully, but I don't know if I would risk a 91 hit again in this situation. Yeah, no. That seems a bit dubious, I won't lie. But <laughs> it's very dubious. I uh, guess you saved an elixir use, so... Yeah, that's was kind of part of it, but I think I mathed out the elixirs beforehand, and I, it was not about the elixir use. It was just greed on my part. Uh, but yeah, mm -hmm. unskippable cutscene about Hector's promotion. Um, he's actually viable for combat again, although he did some work at the starting point. Uh, he killed all the Mermanos with a Sword Reaver, and then he killed a couple Cavaliers. Uh, with a very clever placement, courtesy of Don Don, uh, countered the Nomad dudes with a javelin, and then used the Wolf Beauty to kill the calves. Very cool. Um, but yeah, uh, Hector's Spooky Ghost Town. Very easy chapter, but we found a new strat for it recently. Yes, very recently. So, uh, I don't know, it was, was this the one I found, or uh -huh. was there an improvement made since? I think it's yours. Ooh, let's go. So, it's, it's pretty simple. Basically, uh, we're going to open the Elixir, and in order to do that, we just bring very few items. Exactly like that. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Uh, because you're not going to find my enemies, you're not going to find my items, and this is where... Like... Well, let's just try it. So, in Fire Emblem GBA, if you're standing on a tile that the enemies themselves cannot walk onto, they won't detect you. Which is why right here, we're going to go into Stalagmite, and no one who can walk on a Stalagmite will notice that Heath is in the room. Yeah, except, except the guy that like, night. attacks him, right? Like, yeah. he, he sees him. Yeah, so the only people who move are the, are the thieves. It saves so much time. Of course, these guys stay in front of poison jets, but believe me, if they moved, there'd still be people in front of poison jets. That wouldn't change anything about the situation. But you can totally do it. You can go left. You end up getting a chest key here. Yeah, I'll and we call it too. Exactly. Yeah, we, we call it elixir route because you end up going and getting the elixir on the left. And not only do you get an elixir, but it's actually just the fastest path, as it turns out. Yeah, it's hit a so, chest right, the elixir. Mm -hmm. We're hiding on the stalagmites again, so only the thieves are moving. Again, that means we take another poison animation, even on ourselves. But like I said, if you stayed on the ground, enemies would be triggering poison left and right. It would not be very, it would not be very fun. Mm -hmm. 
I think this is the one move where we let ourselves go onto the land. It's just as we go to kill yeah. this mage really quick. There is a stock might available at the top, but they would fight a bunch of yeah. enemies there, and it would also not get us the elixir. So I think that's the reason we go south here. Uh, <laughs> if you look very close there, you saw I didn't hold A for like a little bit because the mage moved very slowly. Oh no, I don't, I don't remember <laughs> what, what the reason was, but I definitely got distracted by something. Ter Mecha, you're just so bad at firing. Yeah, I got that, that's it. inexcusable. <laughs> no, just restart the whole run, honestly. <laughs> All right, get the chest with yeah. the elixir that we have been hyping for three turns now. And uh, here we're arranged and, a couple more enemies with the javelin equipped, yeah. though, so that's fine. And if you'd gone on that stalagmite over there on the right, then you wouldn't have had a stalagmite to go on to this turn. So, you know, we spend the same amount of time oh, on man. and off, as it depends. Honestly, I didn't even see there was another stalagmite here. So maybe that's maybe that's faster. I don't know, because like you fight these enemies next turn, probably, as you drop Hector in uh, C's range. That's right. I almost wonder if it's worth it to bring the antitoxin here. All right, let's go. It might be, but like it might get. Uh, I guess it doesn't get stolen because you killed the thief instead. We used to not bring any items here because they would get stolen by that thief when you're holding uh, Hector. Pretty good, pretty good. A nice red carpet stride. There's no way that the mage can block Hector from reaching the throne, which is ideal. Oh yeah, I think let's go ahead a, and kill Kim. I think he has a hand next equipped so that uh, he literally cannot. But uh, whatever, it doesn't matter because like, he goes. He goes to anyway because he does use Dax Reaver for good hit against the boss Kaim. There's a fun fact, the tile that Kaim is standing on uh, actually gives Kaim plus 10 resistance. And it's the only tile in the game to do so. Out of all of FP7, the only tile that gives plus 10 resistance. The Idun tile? Yes, exactly. That's again proving, once again, that resistance is few tiles. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what, like three minutes for this chapter? Or about four minutes, I think. It's pretty good. I like this, I like that strat. It's very clean. And another way where flyers gain a lot of time over someone like Hawkeye or Lowen or something like that. For sure. Also, one where actually Heath gains some time over Florina. Florina, I think, needs to double all of the enemies that you fought, whereas Heath one shot everybody except the boss. Oh, yeah. Oh. Definitely. Uh, Get the Tomahawk. Nice. Mm -hmm. If you see me take a while to decide on items in the preps, it's because I really don't want to fuck up. Like, when planning is as tight as it is for this, uh, you really want to make sure you have to write inventory for all your strats because there's no way to improvise out of them if you do poorly. Uh, like the rewards are greater for these kind of strategies, but so are the risks. So I want to mm -hmm. make sure Heath doesn't run out of weapons. I want to make sure that he has enough to go around. I think I actually end up ditching the elixir for the chest key uh, so I can get the bottom left chest with the body ring with him uh, instead of having to kill a thief. And I need to make sure that Heath is near the bottom. Uh, just like Battle Before Dawn, um, this is another defense map, another one where you can kill the boss ASAP to prevent reinforcements from coming out, which is huge in this map because reinforcements in this map can take a huge amount of time. There's no real oh risk goodness. of a game over if it happens, but it just wastes a bunch of time. Also, the green units, I'm sure. Oh, but yeah. I think we uh, got to talk about Denning for a moment, should we? Yeah, you should, probably should. So Denning has a longbow and a silver bow, and he likes using that longbow to go and counter it if he can. There are strategies where you try to bait him into using the uh, silver bow instead, so he gets countered by you uh, using like a two-use spear. Uh, but I've noticed with Heath that this never works because Heath is so bulky that Denning just doesn't want to use that weapon against him. Maybe if I didn't have the Delphi shield, but I'm, I don't remember if I have it on me right now. Uh, but I know that Donna once got a floor and I was just too buff for Denning to even want to go for the silver bow and went for the longbow anyway, even though he had a one or two use spear equipped. And if you recall, uh, low use weapons do attract enemies a lot, uh, particularly That's if right, they do in combat. They erroneously think that they won't be able to counter, yeah. that your unit won't be able to counter, or that you know their their unit doubles. Also, another thing about Denning, he is thick. <laughs> We're at the point where like the bosses are no joke at this point, right? Like, came came was kind of easy. I think Heath is the only main carry who can reliably one round Denning at all. Like Hawkeye doesn't double, Florina just straight up can't do it without a crit. But Heath, if he has capped out strength, which I think Tony Mode Heath will, yes. he'll just walk up there with the Silver Lance and kill him. Also, nice sleep miss. Yeah, this is why I use the Pure Water on turn one to avoid the sleep. Uh, still a little bit luck based. It doesn't feel good to rely on it to dodge that, but I don't mm -hmm. know what the hit rate is. Uh, about Denning, this is where I lost a massive amount of time in my PB as well, the previous PB because um, I promoted Heath a bit too early, and as a result, he ended up missing a strength benchmark. I think it might be one below his cap that is still fine for killing Denning in one round with the Silver Lance, uh, but mine just didn't have the strength to do it with a 2 KO, and as a result, I had to fight a bunch of extra reinforcements on this map, and also just dodge that sleep guy a couple more times, because I had to spend multiple turns uh, killing uh, Denning. Uh, Hector has to fight a Nosferatu Druid that can kind of be annoying, so I used the Pure Water turn one, and then turn two, we can kill with the uh, Tomahawk, even if he... Um, Hits him with Nosferatu. And I got a crit on Denning. I didn't need it. Uh, I was two shunning him anyway. He had 51 HP. I did 26 damage. And now That's the right. main goal is just 
uh, minimize combat, uh, minimize poison animations, and kill enemies, and hopefully the green units die ASAP. Oh, the stupid poison animations, I hate those so much. <laughs> Don't you just love the Myrmidons who double the Armor Knights and deal no damage but poison them maybe each time? They are the absolute worst. Uh, actually, a good reason to draft uh, the flunkies that I have, uh, Kent and Lowen. Uh, what you can do is you can pick up uh, one of the guys like I did, and then only one of them will see combat against these Myrmidons, and it will save one of them. Because if both of them have to fight these Myrmidons, they can take like quite a while. They both get poisoned and face poison animations every turn. Uh, the Armor Knights are also not that accurate. <laughs> do you not want to save both of them? Uh, yeah, so... I think my previous run, I rescued both of them, but it turns out the Myrmidons are aggressive anyway, so you have to fight them no matter what. And I, you could fight them with the units carrying the green armor knights, but why not just let the green armor knights do it themselves? Because they will they all get closer to the sword master that eventually can kill them. And um, or I guess you'd say it's, it's one guy, right? Because you always rescue the first one. But the question is, do we rescue the second one? And the second one, I think he's, he's the best one at uh, eliminating the Myrmidons uh, so they don't get to like lean or to the throne or something. And then also the best at. Uh, like, what was I going to say? Oh yeah, and he can die to Swordmaster. Um, yeah, what you could do instead, which I think is what Donan does, is he gives Lin the Iron Rune and a Steel Sword, so she purposely, and he should block the choke point, like around the corner, where roughly where the second Armour Knight is standing, and uh, she fights the Myrmidons instead, because she's more reliable than the Armour Knights can ever be. And that can also That's work. Right. She has it right. I'm, I'm sure, of course, he he, he trains Lin beforehand. Like, Don Don actually puts a lot of XP into Lin. Yeah. So you know, don't 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 just take any old Lin and expect this to work. Like, no. oh, you should give her some stats. No, he promotes Lin, so like, yeah, she's actually pretty good at this point. I think he uses Steel Sword to avoid suffering from success, uh, fighting too many dudes at once. Maybe I think he's paranoid about leaving the space open for the Swordmaster, and he doesn't want sure. to like Lin to die to her. Uh, I think Donan also, speaking of his strats, he uses a Silver Axe on Hector. He buys one in Cargo Destiny, and uses it to reach some two shot thresholds that I'm not reaching right now with my. I think he's using a Hand Axe right now against this Armor Knight. That's also a potential improvement for this chapter. Yeah, I, I tend to break the tomahawk here, so yeah, I I need some tomahawk uses for victory or death to uh, hit a limb Stella. So I would actually really appreciate not using the tomahawk whenever I can. That's why I gave him a hand axe, even though at this point it seems like I could just use the tomahawk to get one shots. But I actually found it kind of important for him to have a hand axe here. That's true, actually. And to be, it's been a while since I've really like started out victory or death limb Stella kills properly. But you know, I, I was talking about Denning is hard to kill. He ain't got nothing on limb Stella. Limb Stella is. She is a wall of stats, so. Yeah, it's, it's good to like talk about her right now, honestly, because victory death is very short uh, when done optimally. And, um, you know, this chapter is not. So I guess we might as well mention that Limstella is, yeah, Limstella. And honestly, like all victory death was a big wall for um, draft races in general. Like people who are new to draft racing, we get stuck in there all the time because just like Crazy Beast, bunch of reinforcements. Uh, the objective is not usually trivialized. You have to get Hector over to a place where it's kind of hard to carry him when so few units can rescue him. Uh, by the way, we get the Sword Slayer here from the Longbow uh, cool. Sniper. Um, Don't know why he's carrying it, but here you go. Yeah, it's, it's, just a, it's just a free present for you. A mystery for the ages. But yes, uh, a lot of the reason the carries that we have selected are the carries that we have selected are purely because they're able to get Hector to the objective quickly in victory or death. Yes. Like the qualities that they have alone are going to save you five to ten minutes over, you know, trying to route the map or do it slowly. And like Heath and Florina are able to pick up Hector. Archive's actually able to pick up Hector and walk through the map. You know, I think how quick is that? Pretty quick, turns out. And I think the last one, Penfiora, just has a warp staff. So you end up going through the north because that has the fewest enemies and you can skip the zones and you just get out of the map. Yeah. Victory Death is basically a combination of uh Crazed Beast and yeah, and Croc Destiny. That's how I would say it, which is basically why it determines so much of the draft picks, like Raisin said. Uh, it really, like, at this point, like, we have strategies for victory or death, and because of that, it's easy, but that's only because the chapters are so bad if you don't strategize for them. Like, if you don't come into victory or death with a plan, you are probably going to lose any race you fight, even if you pulled off all these previous chapters perfectly. It's just that oh, difficult sure. to get out of, because the reinforcement zones work the same as in Kaga Destiny. Uh, you step into a zone, you face a bunch of extra enemies. That's always bad in this kind of context. Nice miss, Hector. Thank you. And then, very fine. Um, the combination of two boltings and a bunch of ballistas make it very hard to approach the area where the throne is uh, safely with fragile units, which means you have to rely on only the best units to do it to be in the first place. And even the, the best units struggle strat? to survive sometimes. <laughs> Are you going to do the funny village strat? Uh... No, because we'll see it, we'll see I, uh, I've, I've aligned myself with Don Don's uh, unfunny tile strats, unfortunately. 
Oh, come on. So it's not it's not as funny. OK, but fair, fair. <laughs> it is definitely not um, as it, fun. It's probably better. Yeah, to be honest. And we get the chess key. Yeah. Do you think this it's is very important to like let the thief take it and kill him or kill the thief and then take it ourselves with the chess key? I mean, I guess with the chess key, you have to factor in the cost of you know digging through your convoy and finding the chess key. <laughs> I mean, you told um, me to hold L. That negates the cost, right? <laughs> that's true. Yeah, I, I, I forgot about that. You're totally right. Yeah. So I, it might. I don't think it makes a dick, big difference. I just like I've always been killing the thief to get the, to get it, and I'm like waiting for the thief to get it. And then I saw Castle do the chess key, and I was debating him like whether it's better or not. Because whenever I see Castle do something, I roast him over it until he can convince me that his way is better. And then I wasn't sure that was anymore. A lot of good ideas, I couldn't though. come up with arguments. Yeah, it's a great idea. Uh, so yeah. pretty good. I, in my experience, I just have the thief steal it, but the, the chess key is probably better. So possibly we're about to see victory or death, and we were able to skip battle preps. Yeah, we're skipping welcome to Walmart, uh, which is a split as you can see, because I did visit in previous runs. So yeah, going straight into victory or death. Uh, this map, like I said, we have a plan for it, and it involves skipping reinforcement zones, minimizing combat, uh, while still ensuring that Heath and Hawkeye are safe. And then all we have to do is fight them, Stella. For them, Stella, there isn't a whole lot we can do to optimize it. We have done everything we can, I will say. Uh, but you really have to get lucky to get the best possible time against Stella because she's so bulky. I think she has capped out defense and like 60, 70, 80 HP. It's really insane. And she's guarded by a bunch of like really strong ballistas as well and snipers with silver bows. So that's why we bring the Delphi shield this time. Uh, he is bulky enough to where he doesn't really care about double effective arrows in previous maps like Cargo Destiny. But for this one, he really needs a Delphi shield. So Yeah, he's taking like five or six bow attacks at a time. That's so much. Mm -hmm. Not the Earth Seal. Your yeah. funds rank. I know, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so equip Hector with the hand axe. He's gonna need it when he uh, is plopped that back down again on the other side of the map. We give him Ninus Grace, which it always feels so overkill to do it, but then I see how much damage he takes from a double bolting, and I realize, yeah, a good thing I had the Ninus Grace on him. Uh, it's, it's preserved by him being carried around by Heath. Uh, when you're being rescued, status effects do not go away like sleep, but also like Ninus Grace. So we pick up Hector and we go one tile below where the reinforcement zone starts, so we don't start it by accident. And sorry, uh, one tile above the fort. Yep. Just it's very out. delicate the moves that you end up doing mm -hmm. uh, like I guess, you need to get them right you need to not mess them up yeah i guess in in more ways than one this chapter is really the greatest hits of heavy seven because it also has wyvern conventions uh like chapter mm -hmm. 26 uh so if you don't aggro those wyverns by yourself then they will just converge in the middle you never have to fight them and um uh, poor nils yeah if, if if we take too long to kill them stella and seize then nils can die which would lose a lot of time in the final chapter. So I'm just kind of hoping I kill them Stella as soon as possible. Uh, the, the strategies I would say is reliable where you can expect to kill them Stella before Nils gets attacked by the Paladins and Cavaliers. Uh, but I guess there's always a small chance you don't do it properly. Or right. that like, I, someone I misses. I think there is a strat or positioning that gets the Paladins to go north, which takes them longer to reach the zone. Okay, but here we are. So yeah. we're hiding above the village here because this is actually a safe tile. From a lot of the attacks, we're still going to get attacked by the Boltling, but we're not going to get attacked by any Wyverns. And it does put us in range to jump onto the island. And there's a reinforcement zone between us and themselves Island, so we want to bound over that completely in one go. Yeah. It is possible that you take some damage here. And I'm of the opinion that you should take as long as you want in this map to just sit down, heal up, pure water, be as prepared as you can. Because you don't want you, you don't you don't really want to go onto the island without much mm -hmm. HP. But yeah. I, I good. thought I had enough HP to survive at least one turn, uh, but I think I ended up at such low HP that I might have like considered healing. I think I actually had got in trouble a turn after this to realize, oh shit, I'm actually at kind of low HP. I also think I went to the wrong tile, actually. I think I should have gone one up from one left from where I went the previous turn, not this turn, but the last turn. Because I was in range of the bishop that two ranged me, I killed him with a spear, I think. Uh, but I didn't really have to be there. I could have just been in a different tile. I could have been one up, one left, I would have been in range. That was like a pretty big mistake, actually. I don't remember how much damage that did. I, I think the most damage I got this turn is obviously from Lestella's super powerful bolting. And now I'm at 23 HP, and I was like, okay, what do you do here? Do you attack Lestella? Do you YOLO? Or do you heal? I think you just got a YOLO here. You got a YOLO? All right, if you say so. Just dive on. This this chapter gets some pretty rough stuff. And also, like again, Nils is in danger. You kind of want to bunk up for it. Mm -hmm. There is some merit to having an extra unit who's able to sit at the back and defend Nils from these guys in case you take too long. Because if, if I'm going to be honest with you, I think if Nils dies, you reset this map. Mm -hmm. like he's just right. that good in final. Yeah, but here you can take, I'm taking my time to actually math out, like, will he survive another attack? Because if he can survive Fimble Feather, there's no risk of diving here, unless he, like, gets hit by Bolting and Limstella. But here I'm like, okay, I'm going to kill the Bolting guy. And Heath is like, all right, I'm just going to sit in front of him, 
and heal. That's what I decided on. I don't, in hindsight, it looks like I should have just YOLO, but I was looking at my run, I was like, this is like a guaranteed PB if I just survived this onslaught. So I just went with healing instead. But I don't know if I regret it or not, because it's, there's no safe play here. Like, you either risk Heath or you risk Nils, and both of them are a reset, like you said. So there's yeah, no, like, take the safe option, do this. I just I just went with whatever I think I think gave me the best odds. Uh, but now I'm still used Bolting on Hector, which means Heath gets a free pass at just attacking her this turn. It was super good. Uh, but now Hector's kind of low. So if Limsel doesn't die this turn, then Hector probably has to heal. Uh, we're just going to attack here. Uh, no crit, unfortunately. Uh, but Hector's still here. I think he dies to Fimulfeder at this low HP because he, uh, I think Fimulfeder is slightly more than Bolting. But I'm going to math it out anyway because I don't know why, honestly. I probably should have just healed. Just no thinking, just heal. Because, like, yeah, just, just I really I really wanted to attack. I think that's why I hesitated here. And I decided to attack. I think I did the math and decided, okay, you can actually survive, so I should just attack. Because I don't think he takes damage from Ballistas. That's pretty wise. That's pretty wise. Yeah, this probably worked out all right. Because I used some time to check if he would survive. And finding out that she did means that I can just uh, go here. But then in hindsight, I realized when it, when it did happen that I was like, okay, actually, I think without these Hector attacks, I would have still been able to kill with Heath next turn. So Hector could have just like walked, healed, and next turn I just yolo with Heath. But I'm not completely sure yeah. because the math and against him set is difficult to do quickly. Yeah, he was doing 17 times 2, I think. It's hard to say. Uh, by the way, there there is a case where some people are like, should you use Killer Lance, should you use Brave Lance? I think the right weapon to use 95% of the time is just Silver Lance. Mm -hmm. Which does seem weird, but first off, the Brave Lance actually weighs you down. You can't double them Stella, or you can't quad them Stella, rather. And, you know, the Killer Lance for good crits might be good, but actually the Silver Lance has better crits because it does more damage in the first place. So, yeah. Okay, drop the Silver Lance. Oh, you want that bolt? Yeah, I... I think Jeez. if you're if you really path out this game properly, you might be able to get this bolting reliably, and you don't need to get the one from twenty seven. That might be not a good time save. Uh, but you know what? Details. We're in final chapter. That's what matters. So it's time to gear up Athos with all the best gear that we got. Uh, don't forget to give him the body ring. It's super important for doubling everything, including the fire dragon. If you forget that body ring, an elixir. Yeah. And uh, Luis still has it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, it turns out I never needed it. And then fourth, fifth item is always like, you know, do I need the pure water or something? So I just give him pure water. I usually don't really need it, but it's fine to get it. Yeah. And then Heath just needs like a spear and a pure water, I think. That's pretty much all he uses for the entire chapter. Silver Lance is nice to have sometimes. I think it may even be wise to just leave his fourth slot un or unfilled. That way there's one fewer drop animation you have to go through. I do that sometimes too as well, yes. Uh, but I think he has a one-use pure water, so he still gets that benefit. And the Iron Rune? Let's yeah. Go. Oh, I, Sword Slayer, Iron Rune, Hector, I love this. Yeah, I think I shouldn't have done that. I think my, I have a turn-by-turn -turn strategy for this chapter now, which is great because it's such an easy like chapter to choke in. Like, runs die in this chapter all the time to Lords dying to random stuff and having to reset because it's a forced game over or Aethos mm -hmm. dying to something random. And the enemies in this chapter are so strong that dying is pretty common, even for carries sometimes. Um, but I think I shouldn't have done the Sword Slayer, Iron Rune because that strategy doesn't involve Hector attacking Lloyd at all. I just did it just in case. I'd like, it's the same thing with the Elixir last chapter. I don't want to lose this PB. Um, I think I forgot to split at the end of Victory Death because I was so excited. Uh, but you yeah. can see I lost a fair bit of time compared to my PB. Because it, it about clean. a minute, but yeah. you know, such as it is. Damn, killing Uhai in enemy phase. Yeah, it's not risky at all because I still have the Delphi Shield on me and these snipers don't do that much damage to Heath. Uh, they have Silver Bows. If they can kill them, they will, but they uh, decide not to. That shows how much HP I had left. Uh, so Aethos right now, he... Um, I like to take on this room with him. Florina can definitely afford to fight this room herself because her res is so good. Uh, but I think Heath uh, doesn't want to have a round two against Kenneth and risk another crit. So I think this is honestly the proper strat for this uh, team is have Athos take care of this room. And then uh, Heath can just continue taking care of snipers. It seems counterintuitive, you know, have to fly or take care of the archers. But the Delphi shield, he's honestly pretty good against archers. Yeah, and you definitely don't want to. You, you don't want to mess around with this room. For when you can't enemy phase that, that Sage actually has a bolting and he's going to one-shot Nils or Ellie Wood or something. Like I said, Nils staying alive here is actually really good because you, you basically only have Athos. Like, I know there's Heath down there doing stuff, but it's basically you only have Athos. Mm -hmm. So the more actions you can get with him, the better. He dropped the Gish Benched. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mispronounced that. I apologize to any... <laughs> I do think this chapter is, like, dictated by, honestly, like... Not just how well you use Athos, that's like the main thing, but if you want to shave time over the most common strategies, I think the more you use your carry, the better. Because Athos can only go so fast. Uh, Athos can do a lot that's of work. True. If you have a proper writing for him, that's great. But you really get extra seconds, if not a minutes, out of this chapter if you also use your carry to your advantage to clean up rooms quicker. I know Donna, for example, uses Athos to use a door key on the, on the right room, open Darren early, and uh, get an early kill with him. 
which he can afford right. to because Florina takes care to Kenneth Room. Uh, Brennan is probably the toughest one to kill behind like the Reed brothers because he doesn't get doubled by Luna, so you have to like bolting him twice. So I think what I end up doing is uh, I'm considering like bolting him twice, and I realize you know what I can just finish out with Heath because he has nothing to do with this turn, and then Athos can just there head towards um, Darren Room, use an elixir to heal himself while also equipped to Luna. Yeah. And Athos is pretty likely to one round these generals on the right. I don't think it's guaranteed that he one rounds Darren, but it's pretty likely. Yeah, he definitely one rounds the other guy. He does not always one round Darren, but he does double him at least, so the chance of critting him is pretty good. And mm -hmm. uh, you can see this is why I deployed Kent in this chapter to like have an extra option for rescue dropping, just to make sure that Niels is in position. I don't think I needed to do that, um, but you know what? I was you know really, really paranoid about missing my PV or just I just wanted to not mess up basically. Yeah, you don't reset. Yeah. Also, don't drop the Luna. <laughs> do not drop the Luna. Yeah. Whatever you do, <laughs> it's important. This important weapon. Mm -hmm. uh, bottom left room with Jeremy and Ursula. A little awkward because you don't want to kill them ASAP per se. Because Athos is going to take care of the upper right room by himself. But it's not quite clear exactly how fast he's going to do it because of Luna crits. And if he does it really fast, then um, you can actually end up in a more awkward position. So I'm actually kind of hoping for that Ursula or Jeremy will survive here. He crits Jeremy and it leaves Ursula alive. So I think what I'm tempted to do here is not kill Ursula and just run away from her for a turn. And here we see what happens against Lloyd. I crit him, fortunately. So he's out of here. Easy. And this is a great positioning for honestly any carry to go, um, but especially Athos, because now he counters Linus, but I never had to deal with like Lloyd or Linus at the same time. Never had to deal with their hit rates or their crit rates or their support. Uh, so just make sure I'm out of range. I know Heath has more moves than Ursula, so I'm safe where I'm at. Ursula runs back up to me. Because the moment that I kill all the dudes in, the, in this area, like all the bosses, all the enemies, uh, the upper room opens up with her Berserk staff and a bunch of reinforcements from the bottom. And I want to deal with that for as little time as possible. Uh, but because this all worked out so well, Niels is in position to get Athos to Nurgle right as the room opens, which is exactly where I want to be. Can you equip the Aureola for extra reliability or the Luna? Let's see what you do. Let's see, yeah, so I I used the Aureola right away because I think my Pure Water is worn off. If you have a Pure Water high enough, I think you can attack Nurgle with Luna and get away with it and potentially get a crit to save some animations. Uh, mm -hmm. But this is the whole reason I packed the Aureola. And then it's just the Dragon Time. This is one last opportunity to, you know, you know, to save some time by getting a crit. And also, don't mm -hmm. put your Lords in range of Bolting. I think I moved too much here. Uh, this is probably enough. Yeah, this is fine. I know I only have to move units to the right of Hector, but... I think I overkilled yeah, a bit. There, there's probably a square you can move to that is not much movement, but it keeps you out of range. Mm -hmm. And but if you're playing the game, like if you're in the run and you haven't figured that out, don't try and figure it out. Just yeah. move, right? Like, <laughs> Just go. Just go. All Just right. GTFO. All right. We have the body ring. We can double the dragon with Luna. Uh, so we have two chances at a three percent crit here to save a bunch of time. And we got it. There we go. Oh uh, my goodness. I forgot I got it. <laughs> I thought I wasn't about Great. to crit. But we Great did. timing too. And when he hits zero, oh my you mash the button, and it's done. And that's uh, one fifty six forty one. You just destroyed sub two. So nice. Destroyed it. Very well done. This is probably you posting it to Discord right now, right? Yeah. <laughs> I think if you can hear the audio, it's like still recording the desktop audio. You can hear like a snapshot of Gaiazo. That's the screen share or the screenshot software that I use. Where it's like, okay, bam, <laughs> there it is. There's yeah. your 156. Posting it to screenshot, dancing it around my room. Let's go. That was fun. And that's it's not even a race. It's just me playing for fun. Uh, this is me casually playing Fire Emblem uh, off screen oh and I'm just like chilling. It was so much fun. Um, Super well done. So what were the big time saves? I mean, obviously, Battle Before Dawn, not messing up. But it seems like you very consistently saved time in every single map. Yeah. So I think it started in 17 when Hector was like not missing anything ever. Like he hit Raven with two around 40, 47 hits ran axes. That's when it started being like a really hype run. Uh, but then I forgot just how much time I had to save in the late game between Battle Before Dawn, Sense of Time especially. Uh, losing some in Victory Death, but before that, every lead game map honestly saved me a bunch of time. I saved a minute in Crazed, Be in Crazed Beast as well. Mm -hmm. That was really huge. And that went from like, that's what made me go from I think 206 or 208 from 156. And I think what you said somewhere around chapter 17, you can't really expect nowadays to get both Heath and Isadora. I think that's honestly true, uh, looking at the results of this run and just the meta in general. I think you cannot expect to get Heath and Isadora because Heath is honestly a first or second pick, and Isadora is probably a round two early pick for almost every other uh, team. Almost every other player will want Isadora, so it's not likely you get her. 
Uh, but I think realistically, you can expect to get someone else instead, probably Wrath. And he might lose like a minute, maybe two minutes, maybe three minutes. But you can still probably get a sub two run with Wrath instead of Isadora, I think. Oh, yeah, super good. He, I, the, the time cost for him is just the cost that gets him to, you know, level 10 and then do the promotion animation. That's it. And then he does everything Isadora does because he has eight move. That's the only qualification. Do you have eight move? Can you drop Hector on for it? Yeah, exactly. And uh, Heath just kind of does everything else. And I think, honestly, if you get lucky with the Heath in um, not fixed growth, just like in the normal game, not modified in any way, then uh, you can expect to even save more time if you just get a good Heath or Hector. But like I said at the beginning, I didn't want to wait to get a good one that would save so much time through good level ups. Like, if I wanted to know how good my level ups have to be to save a bunch of time, I could honestly just cut the middleman and just change my growth to 100% and try to see how fast of a run I can get, which I can do at some point just for fun. Uh, but really, mm -hmm. the reason to play with this setting is just to see how good can an, our average characters that don't get blessed but don't get screwed, how good can I get with them, with them specifically? And this is the result. And honestly, I'm so happy with it. I'm probably not revisiting this for a while, uh, but these strategies will also help me in a future race, um, roughly knowing what benchmarks I would have to hit for certain parts. I think I have a good grasp of that. And now all that's left to do is practice Hawkeye, right? <laughs> yeah, I know, right? That's that's what I'm working on currently, actually. So if you guys want to see me work with Hawkeye or Florina or even Fiora and Pence, or honestly, even like anything else, like a, a Soyo run or something where you are stuck with bad characters that are good ones, um, let me know down below and I'll, I'll try and see if it's interesting to you guys. Uh, I did speak on commentary before with Kirby Master and those videos did all right. So let me know if you like this or not. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll be back with regular content tomorrow. See you guys around. Raisins, thank you so much for joining. Sure, this was a lot of fun. Thanks for having me on. All right, no problem. See ya. Goodbye. See you all. Goodbye.